Well, hello, welcome to our last Pundit Arena review of the NatWest Six Nations. Uh, it's had everything, I think it's fair to say. Uh, Tom May's been here throughout, and uh, well, we're here to wrap things up, really. We'll run through the games quickly, and we'll also pick our 15 of the championship. A big last weekend, Super Saturday, uh, lived up to it. Well, super if you're not English. Um, yeah. I think I think it was a great great weekend of games. Um, some outstanding performances, both individually and collectively as a team. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and I, I nearly nailed that result, didn't I? I nearly picked Ireland. Italy nearly I, I did Italy it. To, yeah. to beat Scotland. I did pick Ireland. Yeah. Um, so yeah, some outstanding performances and. Um, a few work-ons for some of those teams as well. Yeah, there certainly are. Well, of course, Italy-Scotland was uh, the first match out of the traps. It finished 29-27 to Scotland. Um, another moment where the Shepherds crook came on for Finn Russell and then Greg Laidlaw seeing them over the line. Yeah, he's, the way he manages the game is, is, is great for Scotland. Um, and I think when they bring on Price, um, it's a great way for them to, to generate pace in and around the breakdown, mm -hmm. um, but also have that sort of overview that, that, that Greg Laidlaw tends to have, yeah. um, which has worked for them. Um, you know, in the final stages of a, of, a, of a game, you would probably think that Finn Russell would, would be more suited to that. Yeah. But actually, it's worked out better for them than the other way. Yeah. Um, he was he was crucial and, and, and helped out in, in, in a number of those tries, um, and they needed it, didn't they? Because yeah. they were under the pump at one point, and uh, and were struggling. Um, you know, I thought Italy they've been building towards um, a fantastic performance, and. Um, you know, uh, that was their opportunity. Yeah, it certainly was. Well, uh, it didn't quite come together for the Italians, but plenty uh, of good stuff that we've seen from them over the championship. I don't know if it's going to be enough to stop those conversations about whether the likes of Georgia should be in, but, uh, but certainly uh, they can wrap up a campaign knowing that yeah. there's, there's been plenty of improvement. Then, of course, Twickenham came into focus. It was uh, quite the atmosphere already outside the stadium. A few people put in the Guinness away before we then came down to, uh, well, what wasn't the championship decided, but was, of course, whether England could spoil that Irish party. And they didn't really look like doing so at any point, did they? No, I think the best word to describe that England performance was blunt. Um, I think the Irish did brilliantly defensively, but I, but I also think England struggled from an attack point of view again. Yeah. Um, Plenty of questions on social afterwards, and, and you know we put up the video of Eddie Jones's press conference. It had sixty thousand views within a couple of hours, over five hundred comments. Plenty of those being, how can this England team succeed when the attack is blunt and when Eddie Jones himself is some people suggesting vain or arrogant enough to believe that that he's good enough as an attack coach for that side. Yeah, well, I think maybe maybe now is that that time to sort of improve in those areas if, yeah. it, if it's. it's if it's a learning process and this is this is all building towards the World Cup, well, that, maybe that's that one area that needs mm. a bit of an addressment. Um, Isla were good though, eh? They were very good, yeah. <laughs> and there's not often you score straight from set piece. Yeah. Um, that was absolute brilliance from uh, from Furlong and then to, for Aki to go through and then find Stander. Yeah. Um, you know, there are very rare moments now in international rugby or professional rugby where you get an opportunity to score off a strike play. Um, and to do that in such an important moment in a massive game for Ireland was, was amazing. Yeah, Joe Schmidt was talking afterwards about the fact that they had moves up their sleeves. He said that the, the move they scored off they tried three years ago, he said, or two years ago maybe. Um, he said it didn't quite work then. Well, nine times out of ten, Aki gets absolutely smashed. Well, there. he was saying as well, Rob Carney's run that move where he was tap tackled before. So this time it worked and uh, you know, it shows the nous of, of Joe Schmidt, certainly. I mean, I, what I found interesting is that you know, Eddie Jones is, is, was talking afterwards about the fact that you know, they've now lost three in a row. They're, they're, there's a lot of stuff that they're working on internally. So it's, it might be a bit painful now, but they're going to come back and this is all part of the journey. And he seems very good at spinning this idea that this is all part of the grand plan towards yeah. 2019. The Irish seem there now or seem, seem ready. They're certainly in the box seat. They've then, um, you know, they've got the strength and depth that's starting to appear. We've seen it with the likes of Stockdale, who's, you know, still so young and inexperienced, even at provincial level, as Schmidt said. You know, I, I, was, I was comparing it on, on Twitter to, to Cheltenham last week. You know, have Ireland gone off early with their fancy? Yeah. Um, is, is there still enough, for, in, enough time for England to improve and put right what seems sorely lacking at the minute? Things can change in sports so quickly, mm. and I think that's probably one thing that's, that goes against the Irish mm. um, and allows, allows England time to come Room back to improve, into it. Yeah. Um, but they've got a hell of a lot of improvement. It was only a few months ago they were talking about, oh, you know, now's the time to take on the All Blacks. Well, thank God they haven't. Yeah, um, I mean, bar Australia a couple of times, and, and obviously with the Six Nations, but you know, England put that run of results together with a fair few teams in there that, that weren't, the tu weren't the toughest to take on, were they? Yeah, I mean, you can only beat what's in front of you, yeah. and you have to play the teams that you, you come up against in those fixtures, and that's you know, not, not their issue. Yeah. Um, but I think,
think I think it's pretty far fetched to think this is all part of the plan that Eddie Jones had. Okay, there are, there are some benefits of of losing, losing, yeah. and 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 being party to those improvements, but. You know, um, I think he would much prefer to be winning and, and making adjustments from there. Yeah, he certainly will. Well, we'll find out how many Irishmen versus English feature in our uh, in our 15 of the championship in just a minute, because the final game took place at the Millennium Stadium, the Principality Stadium, I should say. Never going to get that right in one go. Uh, Wales running out by 14 points to 13. Not the best game by all uh, accounts, mm, but a bit uh, of a slugfest. Yeah, it was. Um, um, but but the job was done, and uh, and Wales, you know. Able to do enough, and uh, and France able to get that losing bonus point that saw England finish in fifth. Yeah, I mean, if you look at moments that, that made a difference, Tran Duke, who probably has has had one of his better tournaments for for France in that French shirt, um, you know, he he had some good 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 moments, put some nice nice pieces of play together, but had an absolute howler when that ball bounced, um, so sort of skipped in front of it, didn't even touch it, and mm. Liam Williams gets to score. Um, you know, they're the moments that have made a massive difference. You know, in this fixture. Yeah. Um, and you know, it could have been an, an amazing away win, away win for them in, in, in Cardiff. Um, and I predicted that as well. So yeah. I was slightly disappointed they didn't get that. I know it was very close, wasn't it? I mean, and, and to reflect then, sort of where are Wales and where are France? France obviously showed major improvements from where we thought they might be in the championship. Jacques Brunel is obviously making a bit of an early difference. He was pretty hot on the discipline for those guys that stepped out of line. And as for Gatland, the game plan and moving away from that that famed Warren ball seems to be happening as well. Yeah, it seems to be happening. I think I think um, there's always going to be games where you have to go back to plan A and, and, and slug it out a bit, and that's probably case in point. Mm. Um, but for France and Jacques Brunel, I think it's it's not been an easy tournament because they've still been losing and they've mm. still been making some fairly fundamental errors for international rugby players, but. But I'm sensing you're thinking positivity. Yeah, no, I think I think they're in a good place. You know, they've they've got two fly halves that they've brought in. One who I have obvious pin, opinions about in boxies, <laughs> yeah. um, but also, um, you know, in terms of trying to do, they've reverted to him. But I think with, with Jalabert there, it's now yeah. some time to build over the summer tour. Um, you know, this, the, the towel end at, at eight has been brilliant. Yeah. Um, you know, and and to be a, to have taken those players out that that misbehave mm. and still be. You know, playing some good rugby. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's a good good place for them. Yeah, and for Wales. Yeah, you know, they're they're, mo they're moving forward, aren't they? And they finished second, and, and I think um, looking ever stronger when the Lions came back to them, the likes of yeah. Liam Williams, George North. Yeah, and I, I, you know, the fixture before where they, where Gatlin made so many changes, mm. it actually opened up a lot of lot of options for him. Yeah. Because all boys were put their hand up. Yeah, certainly. And then, um, you know, going to that final game, actually choosing from a pool that has been expanded. So you end up with Schindler on the bench, that kind of yeah, stuff. And yeah, and he learns a lot about his players in, in, in those games when he actually gets to see them. So, um, look, I, th I think it's um, clearly they'd be disappointed to finish second because they all set out to, to win it. But, um, you know, perhaps they might have thought England might have been up there and, you know, they, they did a job and then they arguably could have beaten England. Yeah, yeah, certainly could. Um, well, uh, that's obviously how things have looked in terms of this weekend. Wrapping that up, Ireland at the top. They've won the Grand Slam. A brilliant result for them. And, uh, well, we had all our predictions at the start of the championship from the journalists and from everybody else. Um, we've got all the reaction as well. Hopefully you can see the, uh, the videos and stuff that have been posted on Plundered Arena's Facebook page over the course of the weekend. Time now then to uh, run through the Pundit Arena Rugby Team of the Championship. Tom May uh, and I have had a little discussion just before we've, uh, we're bringing it to you. Um, very few surprises given the talk of the Italian fullback over the course of the Championship. Who your 15 is going to be? Yeah, minazzi has been brilliant. Not only is he a small bloke and I'm, I lean towards looking after those lads. Yeah. Uh, we've got another one coming up soon in a minute. Um, but minazzi has been brilliant. He's scored in the past uh, or, or in four straight tests, yeah. which is a, a record for an Italian. Um, and he's sharp, isn't he? he, does, yeah. he he's a, he's an attacking threat for Italy, someone they can build on. Yeah, uh, so, okay, so let's work our way through. That's 15, Minazzi 14. Uh, an honourable mention for Johnny May with that late try, but uh, it's going to an Irishman, isn't it? Going to an Irishman, another little fella, Keith Ells. Uh, maybe we can have one all under six foot or something. <laughs> yeah. um, but Keith Ells has been brilliant. I think not, not uh, you know, his ability to score tries, but everything he offers around the, the pitch elsewhere is, is of value to Ireland. I yeah. think he's... He's been brilliant. OK, moving into outside centre then, number 13. Hugh Jones. Yeah. Um, outstanding for Scotland. Um, bit of a defensive howler against Italy at the weekend, but we'll forget that because he's been picked. OK, good. Um, into inside centre, 12. Hadley Parks. Okay. He's been outstanding for Wales. Um, 
maybe a mention for for Farrell possibly, and but unlikely. And Bundyaki. Bundyaki, I think yeah. I think has been a great addition for for Ireland, especially in an area well, that midfield area where they've had to make so many changes. Um, and less individual performances, but a duo in Boney and Costello who actually were doing some nice stuff for, for Italy as well. They don't get in there in either slot, but actually yeah. together they, they, they were quite quite. Yeah, no, I, th I think the Italians, you know, they've discovered some players, haven't they, this, mm. this tournament, and, and they'll maybe be threatening to break their way into this team over yeah. the next couple of years. Okay, left wing then? Left wing, well, there's only one choice, isn't there? Stockdale. Jacob Stockdale. So, yeah, he gets that. Um, a great first tournament for him. Record um, number of tries in a Six Nations Championship. Yeah, you know, and that, and that try at the weekend, clearly with the with the blue lines being painted at Twickenham. The, the, the well, Eddie Jones had asked for the b dead ball lines to be extended and then ends up being yeah, falling well, foul of them. You know, it's, uh, but I thought the pace that he showed, you know, to, to, to you know, get, get that. Yeah, he smoked those guys to get back to yeah. the ball. Yeah. Um, and then it's an awareness, isn't it, of, of, of how big that dead ball area was. And yeah. It was massive. Yeah, he did well. So half backs then, nine and ten. Sexton and Murray, I not much explanation required, is it? No. Yeah, they kept Ireland ticking over with the pace and also game management. Brilliant yeah. from uh, from the two Irishmen and, of course, British and Irish Lions. Um, into the pack then, looking at the front row. Well, the front row, I think Kian Healy, you know, he played well at the weekend. Uh, Girardo, yeah. uh, French hooker, is, is an outstanding contributor for them. Um, leads from the front, not only, you know, as, a, as their captain, but also, you know, the way he carries and the contributions he makes around the field defensively is outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, Tag Furlong, uh, I mean, he'd probably get in just for that sort of round the back ball that he had <laughs> yeah. in the set piece play for Ireland at the weekend, which was outstanding. Incredibly skillful, yeah. Um, All right, second row. Second row, we're going to go for Ryan and Wynne Jones. Okay, so James Ryan, yeah, another Irishman making his way into it, and Alan Wynne Jones, who is only 32. I thought he was about 45 by now. <laughs> he's been going so long. Um, That's but, a straight. Uh, well, for, for, for James Ryan in the second row, he's a, I mean, he's a young player. Yeah. Um, and he's come in and performed brilliantly. And, and you know, in an area where across the Six Nations there are some outstanding six, second, mm. second rows. I thought Grant Gil Gilchrist for Scotland um, had some good performances as well. Quiet um, from from the English set. I mean, you know, Mario Toji didn't look quite at the races. I mean, he's, he's doing good stuff. I'm not saying he's not he's not a decent international, but from where he was a year ago, building up to that Lions tour, all of the hype around him on the tour, it's then just gone off the the boil a little, hasn't it? Well, I think he's a great example of how you can highlight a player and say he looks knackered. Mm. Um, you know, and, and it's been said in the press. Few, few of the sort of older Lions guys have said, you know, that that Lions tour takes so much out of you, not only physically but mm. mentally. Yeah. Um, and he almost looks like someone that's been a bit drained. Yeah. And he needs a bit of a break from rugby, and um, which is, I guess, a bit concerning. Bear in mind how young he is. Yeah. Um, but maybe know. that's just a simple load, and you know, at, at least now he's going back to club where. They've got a Champions Cup campaign and the rest of the Premiership to see him. Good. He's yeah. going to get that rest, <laughs> yeah, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, excellent. All right, let's move into the back row then. Well, we've been really impressed with Shingo, haven't we? Mm. You know, I think his, his performances in that six shirt for Wales have been outstanding. Yeah. Was, was obviously dropped and would have been gutted about that. Yeah. Um, but, but came on and made a, a decent contribution in the, uh, in the, in the second half for, for Wales at the weekend. Um, Negri's been, been good for Italy as he well. He gets a mention, he? doesn't he? Yeah, certainly. Um, and then back to the small men, the open side. Good. We're going with Hamish Watson. I think his his um, his breakdown ability is is amazing. Yeah. Um, the way he punches above his weight when he's carrying. Dan Levy must have been in there, but, yeah. you, but you, you just preferred the work that Watson did. Yeah, I just think he's a bit of a pinball. I think quite like watching him play, and I think he's I think he's a great attribute for Scotland because he he almost sort of blends in that area where you know there's normally a distinctive definition of, of that is a forward and that is a yeah, back okay. he, he makes that link quite well very um, good and number eight Tao Len you know for, for France I think he's been brilliant and that line break really sealed it for the weekend um, he must have run 50 metres just knocking people off so yeah. um, you know I think I think he's one player that's really put his hand up for France yeah and um, you know he, he deservedly makes it into the Amazing team that we have picked. There we are. Yes, the uh, the Pundit Arena Championship 15. Of course, other journalists within our stable have uh, have put theirs up as well. But that's uh, that's the one from Tom and I. Um, and we appreciate your company throughout the championship. It's been great finding out what you think and the comments that you've left. Do uh, let us know if you agree or disagree with our 15 there. Um, and uh, well, the Six Nations is done for another year. My thanks to Tom for all of his contributions over the last few weeks. Been funny. Been been great fun. Been yeah, great fun. been good. Okay, we look forward to seeing you soon. Keep up with all the latest on Pundit arena.com